This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Ron? Yeah. Okay, uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome, everyone. Baruch Mabam. So I have to say, uh, Baruch Hashem, we have Shir every week, and uh, I always enjoy giving it, I always enjoy preparing for it. But this year I had an extra degree of satisfaction preparing and learning about. Really, the information is uh, it's really uh, extraordinary uh, meaning and message and something that's uh, very meaningful and powerful. Okay, Rabbi says, so let's get right into it. Yaakov Avinu's first encounter with his, uh, with his second wife, Rachel Imenu. He thought it was going to be his first wife. So, you know, this is his first meeting with her. And the Torah says, Vayishak Yaakov Rachel. Yaakov kisses Rachel, Vayisos Koyloi Vayevk. And he raises his voice and he cries. Rashi wants to know, Farvas Veinstu, you know, what's he, what's, he, what's he crying about? Lefishet Sofa Baruch HaKoydeh She'eno Nechneses Imoi Lekvura. He saw with the Holy Spirit that he's not going to be buried with her. You know, you're getting a little carried away here. They're not even engaged yet, and he's worried about being buried next to her. You know, first let's get the Vart, the, the Tznaim, the Kedushin. You worry about where will you be buried later. Why is this like the first thing that comes to Yaakov's mind is that he's not going to be buried. Well, what does he care? Well, he, what difference does it make where you're buried? Remember in the old shul one time, before we, I had to go to uh, Levaya, Baruch Hashem, you know, it was a different age bracket. So we were driving, we were driving, there were a bunch of Alta Yidinas in the back seat, and they were talking about where they wanted to be buried, and I remember one of them said, oh, this cemetery, it's so noisy there, you know? And the, the other one said, you know, Rose, when you're six feet under, you don't hear the traffic, you know? So why, do, why does he care where is he going to be buried? What difference does it make? And if anything, if anything, Think about it. Is that really the greatest tragedy about Rachel Imenu? Why doesn't he cry about the fact that the poor woman is going to die young and she's going to leave over uh, Yisoyimim? Why doesn't he cry over the fact that Yosef's going to grow up without a mother, Binyamin's going to grow up without a mother, Binyamin never saw her mother? Why is that what she's crying about? Okay, so Rabbi Yisai, tonight's shir comes from uh, two sources, but uh, they both say the same thing. The name of the Sefer is Tzioin Ve'areha. Tzioin Ve'areha is a, a Sefer about the Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael and the cities of Eretz Yisrael, written by Rav Moshe Wolfson, the Mashgiach in Tarvadas. And it's also printed in his Mamorim called Emunah Sitecha. And uh, it's really fantastic concepts about the different types of Kedusha that emanate from various cities in Eretz Yisrael. So that's, that's the question that he asks. Why is uh, Yaakov Inu crying because he's not going to be buried next to Rachel? And very interestingly, the Medrash tells us that when Yaakov goes down to Haran and uh, Aram Narayim, and he sees, the Medrash says, three herds of sheep, and then it says, Ki min hi yashku ha-adorim, and v'nes v'shama kol adorim. The Medrash says this is a remez to the Dalad Goliath, the four exiles. We are, the three flocks of sheep represent the first three Malchios, Bavel, Madai, and Yavan. And then the final Eder uh, represents Roimi. So in other words, Yaakov Inu goes down, he's looking for his Bashert, and through prophecy, what does he see? He says, sees Golos. You know, what does his uh, future marriage got to do with Golos? Okay, no jokes. Okay? What does his future marriage have to do with the Dalad Goliath? For real, you know, why is that what they're showing him? Why is this the vision that Yaakov Inu is seeing? He's seeing the Dal, he's going to meet Rachel. Why, Benavua, are they showing him the Dalad Galiyos? So let's come to this week's parsha. The opening episode of this week's parsha, Yaakov Inu is speaking to Yosef. Yaakov is on his deathbed and he's asking Yosef Atzadik, do me a favor, bury me in the Ma'ara Samach and then Yaakov tells, you know, Yaakov addresses the elephant in the room. Yaakov says, look, I know, here it is, I'm being matriach, you to bury me in the Mara Samach Pela, and, uh, and I didn't do that for your mother. I left your mother on the side of the road. So let's talk about that. Where was Rachel buried? The answer is, which cemetery? You know, which Beis Olam? No Beis Olam. Which cemetery? No cemetery. Where is she buried? She's, she's like roadkill, chas right? She's, 
basically she died on the side of the road and they just they they, they were nice enough not to leave her on the highway so they, they took her and they cleared her off to the side of the road and they put her on the side of the road so what does Yaakov say why did I do that oh I buried her on the road to Ephras. He based Lachem. That is Beis Lachem. So Ramban wants to know why didn't Yaakov Avinu bury Rachel Ma'ara Samach I mean, that's, you know, primo real estate. Why didn't he get her into the Ma'ara Samach And the answer is, Ramban says, he was embarrassed. What was he embarrassed of? He was embarrassed of the, the Zayda and the Tata. Why was he embarrassed? Because it's embarrassing that he's married to two sisters. So what's he going to do? He's going to bring into Mar Samach Pela, Rachel and Leah. It's going to be embarrassing to him. It's going to be uh, shameful to him. So he brings Leah. Why does he bring Leah in? Because he married Leah first. Leah, he married Beheter. Leah is the wife that the parents you know, are proud of. When, when people ask the parents, no, who's the Yaakov married to? So what does Yaakov say? Oh, married to Leah. So they're saying, well, I, thought, I heard he was married to Rachel. No, you know, that's the one they don't talk about. That's the one that he married Be'isr. He's embarrassed about Rachel, and therefore he, doesn't, he did not bury her in the Mara Samach Pela. And again, Rav Wolfson asks, well, wait a second. He's embarrassed from his parents? Why isn't he embarrassed from the Rebbe Nishalaylam? <laughs> if it's an Avera to marry two sisters, he shouldn't have done it. And if he was allowed to do it, if he was allowed to do it, then there's nothing to be embarrassed of. But why say because he's embarrassed of his forefathers? What was so embarrassing? Why wasn't he embarrassed from the Rebbe Nishalayim? A very interesting Ramban. Okay. Marv Rabbi here's a whopper. Let's talk a little about Kiryas Arba. Where did Sarah die? Kiryas Arba. Where is Kiryas Arba? Chevron, near Chevron, in Chevron, adjacent to Chevron. Why is it called Kiryas Arba? Look in the Pasuk. Vatama Sarah and Sarah died, but Kiryas Arba, he Chevroin, Biaretz Kenan. It's Chevroin, so the Pasik says, let's well, Kiryas Arba. Kiryas Arba is Chevroin. Okay, so she died there. Vayavay Avraham, Lisbaid, Lisar, Vilkaisa. So here's a million dollar question. Why is Kiryas Arba called Kiryas Arba, right? Stop any yeshiva boy, stop any kid. You ask anybody. Ask an Amma Oretz, ask a Talmud Chacham, or anyone in between. Why is it called Kiryas Arba? Everybody knows. There are four Zugois buried there. Avraham and Sarah, Yitzchak and Rivka, Yaakov and Leah, and I forgot, Adam and Chava. But interestingly, that's not the Pshat that Rashi gives first. Rashi says, who, who's buried there? Like, you know, four defensive linemen, four giants, four Chayas. Who's buried there? Uh, Achiman, Sheishai, Talmai, and Avihem. So it's called Kiryas Arba, named after like these four mutant, oversized, you know, gi- gigantic people. <laughs> so I asked for Wolfson, wait a second. You're telling me that Hebron, the Ir HaKadosh, one of the four holy cities in Eretz Yisrael, is named after four, you know, giants, four huge people. Why in the world would we name one of the Are HaKadosh in Eretz Yisrael after these four people? Elamai, it's also for that reason. Why would Rashi give this reason first? Shouldn't Rashi say the better reason first? Adam and Chava, Abraham and Sarah, Yitzchak and Rivka, Yaakov and Leah. Why, uh, why does Rashi mention this reason second? Okay, so so far we have a bunch of questions. Why is Yaakov crying that he's not going to be buried with Rachel? Why when he comes down to Aram Narayim are they showing him a remez to the Dalad Galias. Why doesn't Yaakov bury Rachel in the Ma'ara Samach Pela? Why does Rashi say that it's called Kiryas Arba? Because of the four huge giants there, and why is that the first pshat? And finally, another question. Marva Rabbi If I were to ask you, everybody knows there's something called Kedushin, there's something called marriage. And there are three ways to get married, Bekesef, Bishtar, Ubebiya, but Minog Gisral is, we get married Bekesef. Right? And what is the Makar for Kenyan Kesef? Kedushin, Beis, Amad, Aleph. What? Kicha, Kicha, Mistei, Ephraim. It says Kicha by marriage, Ki Yikach Yesh Isha, and it says Kicha by the purchase of the Ma'ara Samach Pela, Nasati, Kesef, Hasadek, Kach, Kicha, Mimeni, Kach, Mimeni. Just like there, it's Kesef, marriage is Kesef. Ask Rav Wolfson, you know, this question is, is uh, in yeshiva, they would call it a bamba. 
how many Minhage Yisrael are there that were so makbid that the Kedushin be with a good simen, right? A mazel de kishor, as they say, right? A, night, a good shah. So, for example, um, the minog is to get married at the beginning of the month. Whether it's a good minog or a bad minog. The law, by the way, the Rosh Hashanah, the Ramah is nohagu, means, the Hafla reads it, not that it's a good minog, it's just what people do. But be it or not, people like to get married at the beginning of the month when the sun, when the moon is getting bigger and not when it's getting smaller. Why? It's a more better, it's a more of a mazel de kishah. People get married. They, I can't get married in that hole. Why? There's no window under the stars. Well, you, one second. You're telling me that your marriage, your shalom bias, you, you're, you're not a mensch, but you're going to have a better marriage because you got married with the window and the open. Yeah, it has to be tachas kipoy sashamayim. It's minog Yisrael. And then there's a minog to get married either on Wednesday or Thursday because on Wednesday is bracha for dagim, on Thursday is bracha, right? It's a day that you get married a bracha la adam. And people don't get married in the three weeks. It's not a mazel de kishah. So, so really, and what's the source of marriage? From the, from the purchase of a cemetery plot. And, and that's a good simon. That's a nice simon. So you're telling me, you can't get married on the 17th day of the month, but where do we learn Kedushan out of? The purchase of a place where you stay after you die and worms eat you. Oh, that, and that's a good simon. That's a nice simon for marriage. A burial spot. A kever. Why do we learn out marriage from buying a burial spot? A plot, a cemetery. The first, okay, well, you know, I could think of nicer places to learn Kedushin out of. Why are we learning Kedushin out of the purchase of the Maras Hamach Pela, as great as Maras Hamach Pela is? Okay, another question. So, the, uh, the 12 spies come into Eretz Yisrael, and we have 10, uh, 10 of them are, they're going off the path, and you have Yeshua and Kalev, and Kalev's getting nervous, he feels the pressure, he feels like he's going to be influenced by the other Miraglim, so Kalev makes a special detour. What's the detour? It says, Vayalu Banegev, he goes to the south, Vayavoy Ad Chevroin, and he comes to Chevroin. Bisham Achimon, Sheishai, Vitalmei, Yelidei Ho'anok. He comes to Hebron. So Rashi, what's the one in the world is he doing in Hebron? What, what, what does he need in Hebron? Says Rashi, Nishtateach al Kivrei Avais. He went to pray by the Mara Samachpela, by the grave of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Why? So not to be persuaded by the counsel of the Miraglam. Wait a second. Well, what's he going to Hebron for? Last I learned, in Pashas Vayetze, Yaakov Avinu goes to the Harabayas, and he says, Ein kiem beis elokim. The gates of heaven are in Jerusalem. What in the world is he doing going to Hebron? What's in, what's in Hebron? There are dead people in Hebron with a with stone on top of them. What's he doing there? The gates of Shemayim. Avraham Avinu doesn't answer Tefillah. Yitzchak doesn't answer Tefillah. El Amai, it's a nice place to daven. What happened to... Why doesn't he follow in the ways of Yaakov Avinu? Yaakov Avinu went to the Harabayas. Vizeh Shah Hashemayim. Why doesn't he go to the porthole of heaven? What we're going to learn tonight is Mamish Oyam Venoira. We're going to learn an appreciation for what is the difference between Yushalayim and Hebron. Why was Rachel not buried in Hebron? Why is she laying on the side of the road? Why do we need two cities, Yushalayim and Hebron? And what do they mean to us here in Galas today? We say in the Yoitzrois of Parshas Shkalem, for those who say it, <laughs> It says as follows, Doidi, my beloved, Zechar li shikle Ephraim. Remember for me the coins of Ephraim, Asher shakal of b'machbel Chevron, that my father weighed out to purchase the Ma'ara Samachbel in Chevron. Cheker shikle yevusi mashbise charain. Let the investigation of the coins given to the yevusi cause your anger to rest. What is that referring to? That's when David HaMelech Purchased the Harabayas from the Yavusi. Zachroli Adlador Achron. Remember it for me until the last generation. So listen carefully. The Yaitzros is saying, we're invoking two Zechusim in the same breath. Please remember for me the purchase of Maras Hamachpela. Please remember for me the purchase of the Harabayas. There seems then to be a deep connection between Maras Hamachpela and the Harabayas. What is this connection? What is the significance of Chevroin vis a vis the Harabayas? And 
what are, why are these two zechusa mentioned in the same breath? Moreover, Rabbi Yisai, let's speak about what the Mara Samach means. So I, I invited my good friend, Rabbi Teddy Pollack, who is the president of the Chevron Fund. So we're going to have a special appreciation for uh, the Kedusha of Chevron and what it represents to Klal Yisrael until today. Okay, what is the Mara Samach why did Yaakov Avinu, why did Avram Avinu want to buy the Ma'aras HaMachpelah? What did he notice about it? What did he appreciate about it? Says the Yalkut Ruveni, and by the way, this Yalkut Ruveni is a Zayar. It's straight up the Zayar. He says like this. The first person to recognize Ma'aras HaMachpelah was Adam Arishan. And this is something we're probably familiar with. What happened? It says Adam Arishan was looking for a place to bury Chava. And he started to smell the scent. Smells good, you know. Smells like uh, it's not Mexican food, you know. Maybe. Well, we, we thank Donald Trump not for, for not building the wall yet, so this way the food was able to get here today, you know. But um, the other Mauritian smelled this a wonderful scent. It smells like Gan Eden. So he buries Chava there. And then he says, you know what? Maybe if I dig deeper, I'll get Mamish into Gan Eden. And Abbas Kol came out and said, Ad Khan Vesulo, don't get any further. And then when Adam Arishon died, the, the Yalkut says, Shais buried him, or there's an opinion that buried him, and other people wanted to bury their dead there, but they were not allowed to. Why not? Because the Malachim guarded it. Until Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov were buried in the Mara Samach Pela, because in the Mara Samach Pela is the gateway to Gan Eden. In other words, if you want to know where the door to Gan Eden is, it's in Hebron. Now, you go there today, it sure don't look like, you know, the Garden of Eden over there. It's, it sure doesn't look like paradise. But uh, that's what the matter says. The gateway to heaven is in Gan Eden. In fact, what did Avraham Avinu pay? Oiver la soicher. Oiver la soicher implies soicher is dar v'soicheres. It's a lotion of a pleasant fragrant of paradise. So if you want to know how do you get into paradise, how do you get into Gan Eden, it's through the Mara Samach Pela. Open up the door, go down there at your own risk, and you'll enter paradise. In fact, if you look over here, number 21, the Yalka Ruveni brings down that Hebron, that the Mara Samach Pela is the base Shar to Gan Eden. And therefore, Avram Avinu wanted to be buried there. Says the Yalka Ruveni, when a person passes away, in order for the Neshama to get to Gan Eden, it first has to fly through the gates of Mara Samach Pela, and through there it enters Gan Eden. Not only that, says the Yalka Ruveni from the Megala Amukais, all tefillahs that we offer go up to Shamayim through the Ma'ara Samach Pela. Interesting. So interesting, but the only problem is that's not what the Torah says. The Torah says about Yushalayim, V'zeh Shar HaShamayim. So what is the Megala Amukais saying? That all of our tefillahs go up through Ma'ara Samach Pela. I mean, I, I would assume then, maybe we could say, that whenever you want to send something somewhere, what's the first thing you got to do? You have to put in the right phone number or put on the right address. So when we give a tefillah, we're sending it somewhere. So the first thing we do is we say the address, we say location. It's being sent to, Baruch Atah Hashem, Eloi Keinu, Eloi Kei Avoy Seinu, Eloi Kei Avraham, Eloi Kei Yitzchak, Eloi Kei Yaakov. This way, the tefillahs know where to go because the tefillahs need to enter through Ma'ara Samach Pela. But what in the world does this mean? That the tefillahs enter Ma'ara Samach Pela? I thought the tefillahs enter through the Shara Shamayim on the Harabayas. What's going on over here? Make a, what, half the tefillah goes up one way, the other half through the other way? What's going on over here? By the way, what do the Avais do in the Mar Samach Pela? Like, what are they doing all day? What do they do? How do they occupy themselves? How do they spend their time? What are they up to? So it's amazing Gemara above Metzir. The Gemara says, Eliyahu Hanavi frequented Rebbe's shir. So every time Rebbe would give shir, the first guy, the first person come to the shir, none other than Eliyahu Hanavi, who was sitting front and center. And one day he came late. So Rabbi said, My hi, what's wrong with you? You know, why do you come late today? He said, What do you mean why do you come late? You know what kind of job I have? Every morning I wake up Avraham Avinu, I wash his hands, I get him dressed, I take him to, base, to the basic nurses to daven, and then I put him back to sleep. And then I wake up Yitzchak, I wash his hands, he davens, then I put him back to sleep. I wake up Yaakov, get him dressed, wash his hands, and he davens, I put him back to sleep. It's Rosh Chodesh, a long davening, you know. The Chazan sang the Pischali of, you know, that the Shlep, the Oiske Shlep, the Pischali, so it took long today. 
So they asked Eliel, so we have a chacham, why don't you wake them all up at the same time? Why do you have to wake? He said, no, I can't do that. If they all wake up at the same time, and they all david, Mashiach would come right away. So I got to stagger it. So from here we see, what do the Avais do? They daven for the coming of the Geula. If they would all daven together, Mashiach would come. So interesting. So, what does Yushalayim do? Is Yushalayim the Shara Shemayim? Or is Hebron the Shara Shemayim? Are they both the Shara Shemayim? Are they connected? So one thing we see is, yes, there must be some kind of connection between the city of Hebron and the city of Yushalayim. So what is the connection? What is the meaning of this? Comes the Zayra Kadosh, and Zayra Kadosh says an incredible thing. We know that the place where Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, uh, Chava, Sarah, Rivka, Leah are buried is called Ma'aras Hamach Pela. It's a doubled cave. Doubled cave. Why is it doubled? What's, what's doubled about it? So Rashi says one shot, Bayis Va'aliyah, it's two floors. Or Rashi says there are Zugais, they were pairs. Says the Zayar, no, Machpela. Machpela does not refer to Hebron. Machpela refers to Yushalayim. Yerushalayim is Machpelah. What is Yerushalayim Machpelah with? Itself. Because it says, Yerushalayim ha-benuya, ki'ir shechubra la yachdav. Yerushalayim, the built of Yerushalayim, is like the city attached to it. There's no city attached to Yerushalayim. You know, there, there's only two, it's not like Dallas, Fort Worth, you know, sister city. You go to Yerushalayim, there's no city attached to Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim is... Harim Savivla. It's not attached to anything. No, there's one city attached to it. Right? Yushalayim Shamala, Mechuvan Kenegar Yushalayim Shamata. So Yushalayim is Machpela. Yushalayim is double, doubled. What's the Zayar talking about? But that begs the question. We're not talking about Yushalayim. We're talking about Hebron. We're talking about Ma'aras HaMachpela. We're talking about where the Avais are buried. Why say that it's called Machpela? Because Yushalayim is doubled over. So, Marabar with Hashem's assistance, we hope we could explain and articulate the following very, very profound idea that Rav Moshe Wolfson says we could derive from here. And that is Yushalayim and Hebron are the same city. Same city, what does that mean? You know, look on the map. Yushalayim is in one place, Hebron is in another. They're the same Indian, but polar opposites. What does that mean? Let's explain. Kedushas Yushalayim. Where does it come from? We know we were required to go there when the base of Mikdash stood. Shalash Pa'amim Bashana. Pesach, Shavuos, Sukkos. It comes from the Avais. Pesach is Kenegad Avram Avinu, the Torah says. Pesach is Avram Avinu made matzois for the Malachim, right? Lushi Vasi Ugais. Shavuos, the Torah says, Simon Taf Yodzayin is Keneged Yitzchak, because the Shoifer of Matan Torah is from the Isle of Yitzchak. Sukkos is Keneged Yaakov. So the Kedush of Harabayis is from the Avais. After all, when Avraham Avinu was at the Akeda, he davened, Asher Yeomar Hashem, Asher Yeomar Hayoim, Vahar Hashem Yiro'eh. It will be said today that God will appear on this mountain, says Targum Unklos, number 25, Avraham Davin, that this should be a Makaim Tfila forever and ever. And when Yaakov Avinu passed by the Harabayas on the way to on the way to Aram Naharayan, he said, Oy vey, efsher sha'avarti al mokom she'espalalu avoysai v'loi hispalalti. That means Yaakov Avinu declared that what is Yushalayim? It's mokom tfilois avoysai. So the truth is Yushalayim has kedushas avois, and certainly Hebron is where the avois are buried. So let's explain. What is the connection between Hebron and Yushalayim? What do they represent? What do they reflect? And... They, they teach us a very, very important lesson. Hashem manifests Himself in two ways. Our connection to Hashem is in two ways. There's Yushalayim. What's in Yushalayim? Hashem is revealed openly. There are open miracles in the Beis HaMikdash. There are ten miracles every day. The Mishnah says in Perkei Avais, Asara Nisim, the Beis HaMikdash, B'chol Yem. There are ten miracles. It was a place of Gilo Yishchina. It was Bahar Hashem Yeroa. Shalosh Pamim Bashana Yeroa Kol Zuchorcha. Yushalayim is a makayim of Gilo Yishchina Mamish. On the other hand... 
Chevron is the exact polar opposite. Chevron represents the fact that even when the Shechina is in Galos, and even when the Beis Hamikdash is destroyed, and even when the Harabais is plowed over and Tornus Rufus could come and plow the entire Makayim, the Ribanisham is still with us. Where is he? I don't see him. You're not going to see it. It's subterranean. You ever know, you know, in some places they make the telephone wires under the ground. Why do they make it under the ground? So that it won't be uh, susceptible to weather, to, to, to hazard, to, to breaking, to, to being cut. In other words, when the telephone wires are going above the ground, that's wonderful. Everyone's confident in the service. The problem is what happens when the big wind comes down and there's a hurricane and they go down. But when those telephone wires are under the ground, you don't see them and you're, you know, how do I know that they're there? It works. It's just there. And guess what? It's going to work even better because they're, they're immune to any type of disconnection. There is what is called our relationship to Hashem, Begiloi, openly, when things are going well, at a time when we have a Beis HaMikdash, at a time that the Shechina is in Klal Yisrael, at a time when we have a Sarah Nisim Nasa Lavisayinu B'Mikdash. And then there is a concept, well, what's going to happen when the Beis HaMikdash is destroyed, decimated, Klal Yisrael is exiled, the Shechina leaves the Makam HaMikdash. Are we still connected to Hashem? Then there is a connection called Yisrael Afal Pi Shechata Yisrael Hu. There is a dimension of connection to Hashem that is untouchable. Let's explain as follows. In this week's parasha, okay, this is a very important akuda. This week's parasha. Yaakov inu davins. Ruvain b'chayri ata. Shimon v'levi achim. Klei chamas b'chayri asen. B'sava b'saydam al tavai nafshi. B'kahalam al techad kevaydi. You know that pasuk? B'saydam al tavai nafshi. In third grade, right, in Torah Tamima, you had to memorize the entire Berchus Yaakov. What it meant, what it... Still don't know, right? But at least we knew about Peh. Right? Besoidam al tavay nafshi bekalam al techar kavaydi. What's Yaakov davening for? Says Rashi. Yaakov says, Koyrach, when you fight against Moshe Rabbeinu, I don't want my name to be mentioned. It's going to say, Vayikach Koyrach, ben Kahaz, ben Yitzhar, ben Kahaz, ben Levi, and not ben Yaakov. Zimri, you come from Shimon. When you mess around with Cosby, it's going to say Zimri, Lamate, Shimon, but not Ben Yaakov. I don't want my name associated with that. Frekta Archaim HaKadosh. Oh, wait a second. What, we're a bunch of fools? We don't know that it's Koyach, Ben Yitzar, Ben Kahas, Ben Levi, Ben Yaakov. We don't know who Levi's father is. How many times does the Chumash say Ben Yaakov? We don't know that Zimri comes from Shimon, who comes from Yaakov. Of what difference does it make whether it says Yaakov's name or not? Who cares? It's still Ben Yaakov. Says Arachayim HaKadosh. A Yisoyed Nifla. Listen to this Yisoyed. When a person does an Avera, they could contaminate their Neshama. You could sully your Neshama. You could dirty your Neshama. But there's something called, there's like one Nakuda in you, in your soul that is untouchable, that can never be ruined, that can never be destroyed, that can never be sullied, that can never be dirtied. You know what that nakuda is? Every person's soul is not just their soul. There's a piece of your father in you. There's a piece of your grandfather in you. There's a piece of your great-grandfather in you. There's a piece of your great-great-grandfather in you. There's a piece of Moshe Rabbeinu in you, Aaron Akoin in you, depending where you come. And every Yid has a piece of Yaakov, Yitzchak, and Avraham in them. That little nakuda of the avais is untouchable. I mean, you could do avera upon avera upon avera and chase God out of your soul, but there will always be what we call the ma'aras hamachpela in your neshama. That deep, deep, deep down in your neshama is a nakuda of Avraham Yitzchak and Yaakov. That no matter how low you fall, you're always connected and you're always pure through that soul, through that nakuda. Yaakov Avinu, how does that Nakuda remain pure? Through the tefillah of Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov Avinu says, Kairach, when you sin, I don't want my name mentioned, meaning, I don't want it to sully the piece of me in you. That's the concept, that's the meaning. That the piece of the Avais in a Jew can never be defiled, dirtied, or sullied. You could chase God out of your system the same way you could chase God out of Yushalayim. Is the Shekhinah in the Beis HaMikdash? It's not there anymore. Is there any covet in, in the Makam HaMikdash? No. Is Yushalayim be'vinyana? No. So does that mean our relationship with God is severed? 
that's what it looks like, that's surely what it looks like if there would only be Yerushalayim. But the Zayar says that a human being is an Olam Katan, which means every chilek of this world exists within a, a person. There is what is called the chilek of the Ma'aras Hamachpela in you, that that Ma'aras Hamachpela is so different than Yerushalayim. Listen carefully. What is Yerushalayim? It's a mountaintop. And on top of the mountain is a mikdash. And on top of the mikdash is a cloud that comes down, and that's the Shechina. And that's wonderful, that's great, because we see it with our own eyes. The only thing is, the more revealed something is, the more you could lose it, and it could be destroyed, and it could be uh, the Chorbana, and it could be chased out. And the Shechina left, and the mikdash was destroyed, and the Harabayas was plowed over, and all of those wonderful levels that we achieved are gone. So does that mean God forsook us? That's what it looks like. But then, deep, deep down, there's another city. And in that city, you go there, and they tell you the others are buried there. And you, you go into the, into the building, and you say, we're down. So, so they say, I want to go down. No, you can't go down. So one guy went down, and he goes down, and they say, well, what's there? A cave. So you go into the cave. And what's in the cave? Another cave. Ma'aras hamachpela. Rashi says, Ma'ara b'toich ma'ara. Well, what's all these labyrinths? What's all these caves? Meaning, it's so deep down that it's untouchable. The Ma'aras hamachpela is a physical representation of the fact that in the core soul of the neshama of a yid is the, a piece of Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. And on that level, that connection with the Yibam Shalom can never be severed. Yes, the reveal, it looks like God threw us away. He destroyed Yerushalayim. He doesn't, doesn't talk to us anymore. No Nevuah, no Ruach HaKodesh, no Giloy Shechina. We're kicked out of Yerushalayim, kicked out of Eretz Yisrael, no Urim Betumim, no Karbanes. All the revealed things that we used to have are gone. So the, the, what Yerushalayim brings to the Jewish people is out. It's out the window. We don't have it anymore. So does that mean we're unconnected? No, there's still a, a subterranean connection to Yerushalayim. Shalom. It's underground, the wires that are untouchable. The same way Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, where are they buried? The Pasuk says, V'anoichi, Haster, Aster, Panai, Bayoimahu. The Medrash says, Hester, Betoich Hester, hidden within hidden. That is the Ma'ara, Shabatoich Ma'ara, the cave within the cave. Deep, deep down, you go to Maras there's nothing, there's no tomb, there's no place. Oh, Avraham is there. And, oh, and Yitzhak. He's over there, under that stone. Nobody knows. It's under a cave. It's a ma'ara b'toich ma'ara. It's what is called the nekuda ha'pnimis of the Jew. That even when the Rebbe Hashem throws us away, there's still chevroin, oisiyos, chibor. We're still mechubar ta'kadosh baruch Chevron and Yishalayim are like two flip sides of the same coin. It's the same Indian. It's the same concept. Yerushalayim is the relationship to Hashem Begiloi revealed. The problem is a revealed relationship. The, revel- the revealed part of it could cease. But if there is this constant that no matter what, we're still connected, nothing can be severed, the, the Nekuda HaPnimis of the Neshama, which is a piece of Avraham Yitzhak and Yaakov, the Ma'aras HaMachpela, within the Jewish soul, is untouchable and can never be changed. Marver Aboisai, why do we not daven toward Hebron? The truth is, all tefillahs go up through Ma'ara Samach to the Shara Shemayim. So then, what are we doing facing Yerushalayim? We should face Hebron. Listen to the concept. What is Yerushalayim always called in the Torah? Makayim. It's called Makayim. Bayoim Ashlishi, no? Zemi, you lay it. Bayisa, Enov. Vayar es hamokoim, right? Roshana. Vayar es hamokoim meirachayim. You saw the, the place from far. What's Yushalayim? It's a place. Yaakov even comes to our bodies, vayifka, vayamokoim. Every time it refers to the makoim amikdash, makoim ashiva. Yushalayim is a makoim. It's to say, this is it. It's a mountain with a building, with a cloud. The problem is that mount, and that's why we face it. You could face a makam. A, a makam is a definitive object. You could turn your attention to it. The thing is, something that is revealed and definitive could be destroyed.
Chevroin is not a makayim. It's an e makayim. It's a lack of a makayim. There is no makayim. We don't know where the avos are exactly. There's no building. There's no monument. It's subterranean. It's ma'ara b'toich ma'ara. It's hester b'toich hester. To face ma'ara samachvela would be the antithesis of the whole concept of ma'ara samachvela. You can't face it. It's not a makayim. It's the opposite of a makayim. Marv Rabbis, everybody knows there are four Yisoidos in creation. There are four elements of Bria. There's, there's uh, Eish, there's fire, there's Afar, there's dirt, there's Ruach, there's wind, there's Mayim, there's water. You know, it's interesting. What is the Yisoid of Yushalayim? What is Yushalayim made out of? Yushalayim is Kuloi Eish. All the Avoid in the Mesa Mikdash was Eish. The Pasuk says, how did they destroy Yushalayim? Be'esh. Uve'esh ata asid levnaisa. The Yisoid of Yushalayim is Esh. You know what the lacking of Esh is? Esh is the most powerful. It's the most manifest, the most revealed. It's the most spectacular. The only thing is, it's subject to extinguishing. Where did David buy Yerushalayim from? Arvoina, Lashon of Or, Lashon of Fire. Or in Divrei Hayomim is called Aroina. Aroina is Gematria Esh. So Yushalayim is majestic fire. The thing is, it's subject to change. It's subject to being extinguished. But the most unspectacular of all the Yisoidos is dirt. (laughs) But dirt is immutable, it's unchangeable, it's everlasting. In fact, there's a concept that the Pasuk says, the dirt, the earth will last forever. Dirt cannot be changed. Dirt cannot be affected. Dirt is lenetzach netzachem. Did you ever realize that one of the most important things that we need to daven for, we don't daven for in Shemana Esrei? We daven for Rafua, we daven for Parnosa, we daven for Ere, Yishalayim. You know what we don't daven for in Shemana Esrei? Our children. You ever wonder that? There's not one bracha in Shemana Esrei for children. There's no mention of children. Well, like, what happened? They forgot to put in a bracha for children in Shemana Esrei? I mean, I would assume most people, if they make Kaisafas in the Shemana Esrei, that's the first thing they're going to daven for their kids. There's no tefillah for children in Shemana Esrei. Says Toysus and Brachas, there is. But it's not revealed. It's in three words in L.A. Kainetzar. V'nafshi ke'afar lakal tia. Let my soul be like dirt. That's the tefillah for children. What does that have to do with children? Says Toysus. The same way dirt cannot be destroyed. V'nafshi, I want to be like dirt that my descendants last forever. That's the tefillah for children. That's what Toysus says. Chevroin? Who? What is Chevroin? It's not Eish. It's Afar. Where did he buy Maras HaMachpelah from? What's the guy's name? Ephroin. He's dirt. Why dirt? Because Yushalayim is much more majestic, it's much more manifest, but it could cease, it could end, it could be changed, it could be extinguished. The connection of Chevroin, the Chibor of Chevroin, is subterranean, it's constant, it's everlasting, it's Afar, we got it from Ephroin. These are the two levels of connection to the Riban Yishalayim. Marv Rabbi is it any wonder then that when Kalev ben Yifune was about to go into Eretz Yisrael. He's, he's in Eretz Yisrael. And he's worried, what's going to be? I'm going to be influenced by the Meraglim. And at that moment, the Meraglim are walking through Eretz Yisrael with bad kavanos to speak badly about Eretz Yisrael. And what tragedy are they about to bring? They're about to bring the Chorben Beis HaMikdash. Chorben. At a time of Chorben, you can't dive in toward Yushalayim. Yushalayim is destroyed. It's like they already set into motion Chorben Beis HaMikdash. You can't dive into your Shalayim. The Shari Shamaim Yushalayim are gone. There's only one last ray of hope. There's only one level of connection that can never be severed, can never be extinguished, can never be put down because it's Afar. We got it from Ephraim. It's, it's the Nakuda Hapnimis that no matter how lowly the Miraglim fall, the Nakuda of the Avais is still there. Where does Kalev Davin? He Davin's in Mars That's the only level of connection left. Now we understand Rashi. Rashi says, what's Kiryas Arba? Says Rav Moshe Wolfson. Kiryas Arba. Look at it. Kiryas Arba. It looks on the outside. 
like a bunch of Rishayim. These four Chaya Rus are running around. It's not like Yushalayim. Yushalayim Begilo is Gilo Shechina. Rashi says, in order to appreciate what Kiryas Arba is, you need to hear both Perushim, and you need to hear it in this order. That what is Kiryas Arba? It's something that on the outside is full of Arabs, it's full of giants, it's full of um, Achiman, Talmai, Sheshai. On the outside, it looks like all levels of connection are severed. There's nothing redeeming over there. But if you look in the second shot of Rashi, look a little deeper, look under the ground, you'll see that the connection of the Aves HaKadoshim, that is un... cannot be severed, cannot be destroyed, cannot be lost. It's everlasting. That is exactly why Rashi lists both interpretations. And the first interpretation he gives is Arba Anokim Shahoyusham, Achiman Sheshe Tamai Baviam. That's the way Hebron looks. That's the way the Yid might look on the outside. On the outside, he looks like a Chayara. His Maise might be Rishus, his Maise might be uh, Metuav, but nevertheless, Davar Acher, deep, deep down in the Neshama, is still the Nakuda Pnimis of Adam, Avram, Sarah, Yitzchak, Rivka, Yaakov, and Leah. That's the meaning of this. So now we understand the following. Okay? The next concept is really, it's mind-boggling. We all know, we mentioned it in Shul um, a couple, maybe a couple months ago. The marriage between a woman, a man and a wife is a dogma, is a mashal to the relationship that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has with Kal Yisrael. That Hashem is the chasan and we are the kala. And in our own marriage, our relationship with our spouse is a mashal for the relationship that Hashem has with Kal Yisrael. And with every spouse, there are Yerushalayim days and there are Hebron days. What does that mean? You need both. You need Yerushalayim. You need to have good days where you're both enjoying each other and besimcha and your ba'ava and it's like, you know, the first week you got married and there's giloy ahava, the ahava is revealed. But if people only have the madrega of Yushalayim, forget it, their marriage is doomed. Because not every day is going to be, you know, Yushalayim bevinyana. What's going to happen when Tisha B'Av comes in the marriage and they're demise and people are fighting and you're at each other's throat? What's going to be then? You need to know that it doesn't matter how things look on the outside. Bottom line is, deep, deep down, you're still connected, no matter what. When you said, Hareya Mekodesh Asli, you meant forever and ever. I, it doesn't look so good today. You need to know there's a relationship of Hebron. Every healthy marriage has to have both. You have to have, if you don't have, if you don't have any good days, it's not going to work out. But you have to know there are good days, there are Yushalayim B'Vinyana, and there are Yushalayim B'Chorbana. But the way Yushalayim B'Chorbana could survive is if you understand deep down you have this bond of the Ma'ara Samach Pela. Now let's explain. What's my bond to my wife? That if things are not going well, that I'm connected? Very Pashat. There is a level of connection that you don't see. And what is that? That there's a concept, Arboim, Yoim, Koidim, Yitzirah, Savlad, Bas, Kom, Achrezes, Vaimeres, Bas, Ploini, Leploini. No, I can't take it. I asked you to put the food over here. You put it over here. No, relax, pal. She's not your wife. This is you. You're connected. Your souls were attached in Gan Eden. They were broken apart and they're back down here together. There's no way around. What, what, what are you thinking? You're the same person. You know? It's your fault. You didn't serve it, bro. She is you and you're her. You're one entity. And that, that means your neshamos are connected. They're one entity. And even la'achar of esim shana, you're both in the ground and you're dead. So you say the marriage is over because Misa ends the marriage. No, it only ends the marriage of the Giloy. But the, the neshamos are still connected. The neshamos are connected. The hiskin loy mimenu binyan adeyad. People forget about it. People think their only marriage is like an arrangement for this world to make things work. No, it's not an arrangement. You're the same neshama. 
there's the giloy of marriage. The giloy of marriage, how it looks on the outside, everything's wonderful, you love each other and you enjoy each other's company. But you have to realize there's something subterranean about the relationship. What is it? That you come from the same soul and the souls will be united. Hanehavim b'chayeyem uvamisam loy nefradim. Yeah? Now, if in a marriage, the marriage is firm and connected, that is symbolic of our relationship with Hashem. Avraham Avinu knew that because he's the Rosh Ha'am, he's the head of the people, he's the beginning of the people, his marriage to Sarah will, will create the relationship between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Knesset Yisrael. And the stronger his bond to Sarah is, the stronger the, the bond of the Yibam Shalom to Knesset Yisrael. And if his relationship with Sarah is forever and ever and ever, then the Yibam Shalom will never get rid of us. Therefore, Avraham made it his business that he's not just going to be with Sarah, but he's going to be laying next to her under the ground in the Mar Samach Pela, and then the Yibam Shalom will be connected to Klai Yisrael forever and ever and ever. Says Moshe Wolfson, really, one of the most beautiful ideas I ever heard. You know what the Makar of Kedushin is? The Makar of Kedushin is, hey, hey, Bachar, hey, Yeshiva Bachar, you think you're getting married now for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, 60 years, 70 years? No, no, no. Kicha, kicha, misteya, frayin. This marriage is going to be past, even when you're both gone. You're going to be lying in the ground together. For how long? The hiskin loimi menu binyan adayad. You have to understand the eternal relationship that you're forging. The reason we learn Kedushin from Stei Ephraim, from the, from the purchase of the burial spot, is because the Ma'aras Hamach Pela represents the fact that marriage is Lanetzach Netzach, and that's the Hakdama to Kedushin. That's Beis and Aleph in Kedushin. What's Beis and Aleph in Kedushin? Marriage is not when you're both in your 20s or your 30s or 40s, and, and things are going the way you like. Marriage is when you're both toothless, Marriage is when worms are eating you up. Marriage is when your skeleton. Marriage is when your souls are in Gan Eden. That's the marriage forever and ever and ever. That's why it was so important for Avram Avinu to buy the Ma'ara Samach Pela. Oh, that's why in Parshas Chayyasara. What's the Hakdama to Shaduchim? Where's the Parsha of Shaduchim in the Torah? Chayyasara. What's the Hakdama to Shaduchim? The purchase of Ma'ara Samach Pela. You can't make a shidduch before you understand what the marriage is all about. What is marriage? You're going to be together forever and ever and ever. Oh, now we're ready to make a shidduch. But if once you think it's disposable, when you, if you think it's only in this world, then we're not ready for shidduchim. Shidduchim is first let's buy the Marasamach Pela, then we're ready for shidduchim. But even on a deeper level, the eternal union of husband and wife represents the fact that we are connected to Yibbana Shalalam forever and ever and ever. It's mamish. One of the most beautiful things I ever heard. That is the source of marriage. Kicha, kicha, misteyaf. Okay, now this is out of this world. Okay? This is Oyem and Ayra. So Yaakov, you know, here's the thing. He has two wives. So how does that fit in? He's Rachel and Leah. There is a well-known concept, a Kabbalistic concept. Let's just explain it. It's not something I was familiar with. Let's explain it very clearly. The Ramchal writes, there are two levels of relationship that we have with Hashem. There's Yushalayim, which is our revealed relationship. And there's Chevroin. What's Chevroin? It's a relationship, subterranean, you don't see it, but it's a constant, it can never be broken. There is Rachel. Rachel is what is called Oilam de Iskalaya, the revealed relationship to Hashem. And there's Leah. Leah is the subterranean relationship with Hashem. There's Rachel and Leah. These are two Kabbalistic concepts. The Olam of Rachel and the Olam of Leah. Rachel represents the revealed relationship. Now, let me ask you a question. Which, who's the main wife? Who's the Iker Sabayas? Rachel. Rachel's the main wife. You know why? What's marriage? Marriage is you're, you're at each other's throats, but what can we do? We're stuck? Or marriage is when, you know, the good times. So the Iker of the marriage is the Rachel. You need the Leah, but the Iker Sabayas is the Rachel. Rachel always represents the relationship with the, we have with Hashem begiloi. Leah is Yisrael Afapishachata Yisrael Hu. Rachel is when Klai Yisrael is in Eretz Yisrael and we're doing mitzvahs and we're learning Torah and Hashem reveals Himself openly. That's the level of Leah, of Rachel, excuse me, Oilam de Iskalaya, the revealed world. And Leah is when we go into Golos 
and we're thrown out of Eretz Yisrael, but we're still connected Chevrayin. Why? Because this Gasaya, hiddenly, we're still connected. Deep, deep, deep down in our souls, there's a pristine kernel that is untouchable. Fine. Yaakovin is a smart man. He realized he has to marry both of them. You know why? Because again, if the marriage of the Avais represents our relationship with Hashem, we need to have both relationships with Hashem. We need to have the good times. We need to have Yishalayim B'Vinyana. We need to have the glory days, the days of Nevi'im, the days of miracles. That's, those are the Rachel days. And we know we're going to go into Golas, and we know we're going to be thrown out, and we know we're going to be in America, in the five towns. And we need the relationship of Leah. We need to know that no matter Yisrael, Afal Pishachat, or Yisrael, we need... The, so we need Yaakov to marry both. Yaakov sees Rachel. And Yaakov says, wait a second. Yaakov sees everything. He knows which one of the girls is going to live longer. Leah is going to live longer. Rachel is going to die young. Yaakov says, I have a great idea. I'm going to marry Rachel first. I'm going to marry Rachel first. She's going to die young anyway. When a sister dies, you can marry the other sister. So if I marry Rachel... And then I marry Leah. I'll have no problem bringing both of them into the Ma'aras HaMachpelah. Listen carefully. Right? Nothing to be embarrassed about. I married Rachel. And then if she dies, I'm allowed to marry Leah. You're allowed to marry a woman's sister after you. If a person's wife has to die, you can marry your sister. Aleha Bechayeha. So Yaakov says, I have a great idea. I'll marry Rachel. Now, if Yaakov would have married Rachel first, Rachel represents the glory days when Hashem is revealed. If Yaakov would have taken Rachel into the Mara Sanach Pela, he would have been taking Yerushalayim Begilo into the Mara Sanach Pela, buried her deep down with him. Yerushalayim can never be destroyed. Then not only would our secret subterranean connection to Hashem never be severed, but then even the revealed connection to Hashem would never be severed. And guess what there would never be? No galos, no chorben, no tragedy. So Yaakov sees Rachel. What's the first thing he does? You know, first date. What's the first thing going through Yaakov's mind? I want to be buried with her. Because if I'm buried with her, and I bring her deep down in Tamar Sanach Pela, and I make the revealed relationship that Hashem has with Kal Yisrael untouchable, call it a day. That's the end of days. That's it. We call it a day. Mashiach comes right away. Because that means not only we know the secret relationship with Hashem, the Golistic relationship with Hashem is untouchable, but then even Yerushalayim Bivinyano would never be destroyed. The revealed relationship would be untouchable. So Yaakov sees Rachel, he knows she's going to die young. So he says, I'm going to marry her, I'm going to bring her with me to Armas and then I'm going to marry Leah, and I'm going to have Iskalaya and Iskasaya deep down in Armas Pela, untouchable. All wires are untouchable. Yerushalayim would never be destroyed. But then he sees he's not going to be buried her, with her. You know what that means when he sees he's not going to be buried with Rachel? Chor ben Beis HaMikdash, the loss of the Shechina, the destruction of Yishalayim, all Holocaust pogroms. When Yaakov saw Rachel and saw that he wouldn't be buried with her, the deeper meaning is that the revealed relationship with Hashem one day would cease. And that's why he cried. And that's worthy of crying about. Not that she would die young. Yaakov envisioned all Jewish tragedy in the fact that he would not be buried with Rachel. It's brought in a sefer. When the Munkach Rebbe came to Eretz Yisrael, they recorded in a diary his travels. He came to Kever Rachel, and it's brought there that the Rabbanim in Chutz Arts were not happy with Sir Moses Montefiore. Why? Because before Sir Moses Montefiore, you know where Rachel was buried? On the roadside. Where? Like in the ground. Just, just there. You know, they covered over with a little dirt. But you could go there and then, where's Rachel? Oh, she's, she's right there. You could see her? No, no. You know, we covered the face with dirt. And it was Dafka, they wanted it to be that way. You know why? Because Rachel comes from Olam de Iskalaya, from the revealed world. Her burial place had to be revealed. Leah is from the hidden world. She has to be deep down in the Mara Samach Pela. But until they told the Rabban, and look, the Arabs are surrounding the area, and they have a cemetery all around, and it's not proper that it's going to... We can't daven with, with dead bodies strewn all, all over the place. So they were 
They were maskim to what Moses Montefiore did. But there is a concept, again, that Rachel represents Olam de Eskalaya, the revealed connection to Hashem. We have two levels of connection to Hashem. We have the revealed connection, which is subject, subject to change and destruction and extinguishing. And we have the subterranean connection, the connection of Hebron, the connection that is immutable and cannot be changed. If Yaakov Avinu had his druthers and he sees Rachel, he would have married her first. Buried her in Marathon Apela, marry Leah, and bring her with him as well, and he would have nothing to be embarrassed of. So, who orchestrated that Rachel cannot be buried in Marathon Apela? Lavan Bikesh, Lakaras Hakoil. Lavan wanted to be uproot everything. So, everybody, Cheshvan Zach, what was Lavan? How did Lavan try to uproot everything? Very Pasha. Lavan, who's Bilam the Kachatumah, he realizes that if Yaakov marries Rachel and takes him with her to the Marasana Pela, and then basically, what's the Marasana Pela? It's like a security box that's untouchable. If Yaakov gets Rachel into the security box, it's the end of days. The Jews are set. So Lavan has a whole I'm going to switch Rachel for Leah. Yaakov's going to marry Leah first. Leah's going to live a long time. Leah's going to live a long time. Yaakov cannot marry Rachel Beheter. He's going to have to marry her Be'iser and leave her on the roadside. Once she's left on the roadside, there's no security on the revealed relationship with Hashem. Then Yerushalayim is subject to Chorben. Then the revealed level of connection to Hashem is subject to be undermined. This is the deepest pshad in Labikesh Lav on Lakar Sakal. How? By orchestrating that Yaakov cannot marry Rachel first, but rather marry Leah first. Oyoim ben so let's just con- conclude with the following. I think we explained why Yaakov cried when he saw that he would not be buried with Rachel. He envisioned all the Jewish tragedy. Because Yaakov married Leah first, he could not bring Leah, he cannot bring Rachel with him into Mar Samachpela. What is Mar Samachpela? It's both Pshatim of Rashi. On the outside, it looks like all is lost. It's a situation. In other words, there are different levels in life. There are different stages in life. There are different dimensions in life. Every Jew has what is called moichen de gadlos, moichen de katnos. In simple terms, that means you have days you feel connected and days you don't feel connected. Every Jew comes a, a Yom Kippur, you feel uplifted, you feel connected, you feel cheshek to daven. Sometimes a person has cheshek to learn. You feel like you're connected to God. That's the Yushalayim. That's the connection of Yushalayim. But that level of connection is subject to extinguishing. It's not going to be every day. Sometimes the Yitzhar is going to come along and he's going to be machriv your Yerushalayim. On such a day, says Ramosha Wolfson, on a day you can't go up to Hara Maria, no problem. Go down to the Mikdash of Ma'ara Samach Pela. Go down into your soul and realize, even if you have no cheshek to Davin, Davin anyway. You're not in the mood of learning, learn anyway. But I'm not connected. I don't feel it. Don't worry. You are connected. There is a Nakuda Pnimis in the heart of the Jew, and that's the Nakuda of the Avais in you, the Maras Hamach Pela in you, that is not subject to change. We, by the way, Tikkun Chatzois, very quickly. There are two, there are two parts of Tikkun Chatzois. There's Tikkun Rachel and Tikkun Leah. Tikkun Rachel, we only say during the week. Because Tikkun Rachel is crying for the Chorim Beis HaMikdash. We don't say it on Shabbos. It's so sad. Tikkun Leah. Tikkun Leah, you say the whole week. You know why? You ever realize Rachel's Mavaka Aboneha? Leah's not Mavaka Aboneha. You know why? Rachel's level of connection is destroyed. So in her mind, the way her children are supposed to be is not the way it is. It's not the way we are. We're not the way we're supposed to be. In the Ene Rachel, Rachel's Mavaka Leah's not Mavaka Aboneha. Leah looks at us. She sees the Nukuda Apnimis. We're wonderful. We're, we're perfect. Tikkun Leah, you say even on Shabbos. Marv Rabbi Isai, Yushalayim and Chevroin are two parts of the same coin. Yushalayim is Gilo Shechina B'farhesia. Chevroin is the Madrega of Yisrael Afapi Shechata Yisrael Ho. So we hope, B'zman Azel, we don't have Yushalayim B'vinyana. We do have Chevroin. And we hope, Shvizoyche, to also have the Madrega of Rachel Imenu, and the promise to Rachel Imenu is Veshavu Banim Lagvulam that the Rebbeinu will love us not only Benakuda Pnimis but even Befarhesa even Megaloi. Thank you everyone for coming. Have a great night. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.